John Moxley chooses war. So on AEW Dynamite yesterday, he cut a couple of promos. One was a pre-recorded one on Danielson, and one was facing off with Darby Allen, who is currently the number one contender to the AEW World Championship, and he looks to be challenging Brian Danielson, but it looks also that John Moxley wants his number one contendership spot. So you saw both interviews, segments. Yes. What do you think of the first one, the pre-recorded one, where he uh, talks about why he did what he did to Brian? Well, the first thing that hit me was somebody is writing their stuff now. Somebody is writing this down because it went a minute and a half at least. And the one in the back may have went a little longer. I don't think he, uh, he is that good to pull it off the top of his head. It may be, but it was well, well written, but better than that, it was well delivered and it, and he didn't have that hollering and screaming and because that's what Moxley's goes he's Mr. Seriousness so when he he did that interview and the way he did it I think was very well executed and my hat's off to him he he did a good job but and I've been saying the whole time hey let's let's tighten up on these interviews guys Let's let them actually say something that means something. So now they may have listened to this podcast enough. And when I keep saying, tell a story, because when you tell the story, the angle stretches farther instead of just, oh, I'll hit you in the head with a two by four. And the next week I hit you, I'll hit you in the head with a two by four. Well, by the time you get to week three, now you're back where you started. If you both hit each other, one guy got even, one guy's trying to, you know, not get hit in the head. But now they've told a story. Now the, you know, I've always said, it's not the, the first thing you do in angle. It's the second thing. So by leaving Brian Danielson off, if that's what they're going to do and, and just talk about it, they'll need a, a an interview or two just laying down with oxygen on, he pulls it off, and that's all he's got to say. He said, I'm coming back. You're not going to put me down by that. And that's telling the story. So now we're waiting for him to get back. Of course, by this time, Moxley is off on another pursuit. And, you know, somewhere along that pursuit, ends, uh, Brian Danielson is, is going to come in, and they take off. That's the story they need to tell. But I could tell very quickly with these two Moxley interviews that somebody, I don't know who, is writing these interviews uh, for Moxley or for the other people and for, what's his name, the the guy with the blonde hair? The, uh, Darby Allen. Da wrote it for him too because that was very well delivered too. And that's even better than, you know, them going in and fighting back and forth and, you know, because that, that's so worn out. But just let them talk to each other and he gets out and leaves. Hey, the woman with Moxley, that's that uh, Shafir girl? Yeah, yeah Marina Shafir, yeah. She's the UFC or the MMA girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I didn't. I saw her. I didn't, I didn't even recognize her. She's not a bad-looking girl. I'm just having a look. She is uh, Romania Moldavan, Moldovan born professional wrestler and former mixed martial artist as well. Mm -hmm. Where where's she for? Is it UFC? No. I, I don't know. No, no. The last, uh, last fight was in Invicta, I guess. Uh, okay, then. She she seemed like she was doing the mean mugging China thing. Just That's more Taz, I think, actually. Suppose, and I, I think that's the best thing for her to do. Hmm. Seen, uh, uh, but not really heard. She didn't have nothing to say anyway. I mean, she just stands behind Moxley, and that's it. I don't know who put that together, but that's that's a good that's a good combination. So maybe I think Tony Khan may be listening to this podcast, where you know we usually just slam uh, AEW for their stupid stuff, but they've done some good stuff, even though they I, I think they went too far in some of it. But at, at least now they have they have two angles that are brewing. You know, Paige and Strickland, he's got to go out for a while. And then Moxley and Danielson, Daniel's got to go out for a while. And then bring them back. Now, 
they've added about a six week or two month program and they're not scrambling anymore. So I'm glad they did this. I don't know if this is Tony Khan putting this together or who helped him, but I'd like to know. Yeah, there's been a couple hey, of I could call, I could call, I bet I could call Dave Meltzer and he could tell me. Yeah, he could probably say, yeah, <laughs> he could probably say, it was my idea, Dutch. He could he could do that. There's also another theory that John Moxley is, because he's now probably the lead heel in AEW, I guess, because mm-hmm. at least he's got a clearly defined role. There was also a theory that he is going to be responsible on screen for bringing Shane McMahon into the company, and then there's going to be a sort of intercompany warfare in that sense. Well, that's telling a story. Okay, when you just said that, that made my interest rise in watching AEW. I think they're better off taking a lower uh, number of talents to push and tell the story than the 180 or the 160 they got now. Because just because you have numbers of talents doesn't mean anybody's interested in it. So I, I think... I actually like the way AEW is going now. So I hope somebody takes this and sends this to uh, Mr. Khan, Mr. Tony Khan, because I think they have made a a, a broad uh, improvement in a short amount of time. And I take it from your glowing review there that you think John Moxley is the man. So he's a good choice for a lead bad guy to revolve. Oh, he the is. He is. Uh, he looks. He looks goofy. He looks no. What he looks like, not goofy, but it's the wrong term for. He looks dangerous, and he looks serious, and he is a type of guy that you would take seriously if you met him on the street. You'd have to look at him twice before you would want to decide to throw some hands with him, or to get mixed up with him. So. You know, people can see you in the ring and like they see M- MJF in one in one vein and he's a heel. But he's a heel you kind of like and you want to like. But Moxley is a heel that you don't like at all and can't even bring yourself. He has a, a face and a demeanor that only a mother could love. So when he presents himself to the general public, I mean, he's putting it out there that, hey, don't mess with me because, you know, I got some more tricks I could use I haven't even thought about yet. 